moving to the next chapter called as IFOS. Quickly understanding the subject. Chapter is basically a garbage section, which basically comes and says that if nothing is taxable under other heads of income, it becomes taxable under IFOS. Simple garbage. Yes, where they're coming and saying if nothing is taxable under other heads, you tax it under IFOS. Some examples are given to you like dividend income because dividend is always taxable under IFOS. Then they've come and said gift, uh, premium on issue of shares, any item of income, rent and all those things which are not taxable under other heads of income. Simple, straightforward IFOS incomes. In this, what you have to know is that there are some items which you have to keep in mind. There are some items which you have to keep in mind. First item is your uh, interest on enhanced compensation will be taxable under the head IFOS with a 50% deduction. Advance received on four feature after 2014. Yes. Then you have interest on post office savings. You will get a 3500 exemption here. Then you have to go to a chapter 6. Eight. Then you have to go to chapter 6. Eight. The 3500 of exemption is very important. Just keep that in mind. You get a 3500 exemption here. Then you go to chapter 6. Eight. Then you have family pension and family pension. They come and say it is one third or 15,000, whichever is less, whichever is less. Any amount received under family pension is also taxable under this set with one third exemption or 15,000, whichever is less. Yes. Apart from that, the most important items under IFOS are your premium on issue of shares and gifts. So we'll discuss about the premium on issue of shares. The provision is coming and saying you have to satisfy certain conditions. Condition number one, you should be a closely held company. Condition number two, the closely held company should issue shares at a premium. Very good. At premium. Section number three, they're coming and saying the issue of shares to premium should happen to a resident person. Should happen to a resident person. And point number four, they're coming and saying if you are making the shares at a premium, the share value including premium should be more than the fair market value should be including the fair market value. So assuming that the share is 10 rupees, you have issued it in premium of 100, total share price is 110. If the fair market value ends up being 80, then 30 rupees becomes taxable. 30 rupees becomes taxable. At this point of time, please understand, if the shares are not issued at premium, the section does not apply. Even if the fair market value is lower. Even if the fair market value is lower, premium is mandatory, resident is mandatory, private company is mandatory, and the total price should be more than the FMB. Satisfy all these conditions, then only the section will apply. Clear, not clear? Yes, yes. Simple, straightforward section will uh, normally come only as MCQ, cannot come anything beyond that. Cannot come anything beyond that. After you complete your premium, comes your most important section from IFOS called as your gift. Called as a I told you when you do gifts, we have a certain format. We have a certain format. First is to identify the asset. First is to identify the asset. In gifts, we have three kinds of asset. One is cash, mobile, specified mobile. Immobile. Yes, cash, specified mobile, immobile. This is step number one. This is step number one. Step number two, we came and said, determine whether it is falling within the exceptions or not. Determine whether it's falling within the exceptions or not. We told boss exceptions because the format is dirt, min, clot. It's dirt, min, clot. D for death, I for inheritance, R for hold, relative means spouse. Let's do left, let's do left, let's do left. First spouse, then brother, sister, parents, parents, brother and sister, grandparents, grandchildren, grandchildren and grandchildren, children and grandchildren. Yes, then let's, vara vara. then do right side, then do the right side, you have spouse left side ra. Then do the right side, it is spouse or a brother and sister, spouse or a parents, spouse or a grandparents, spouse or a children, other left down. <laughs> Other left now. Yes. All these people and their spouses. All these people and their spouses. Keep that in mind. All these people and their spouses. At the same time, they are also clarifying that boss, niece, nephew and all not covered. Which means my brother, sisters, or children, not covered. Spouse, brother, sisters, children, not covered. Spouse, parents, brother, sisters, not covered. Okay, these are all not covered people. These are all not covered people. Ah, D for death, I for inheritance, R for relative. T for trust, very good. Any gift received by trust or given to trust, both are exempt. Then M for marriage, please understand what is exempted is marriage and your marriage. Marriage and your marriage. Anyone else's marriage, you getting gifted, taxable. Your wedding anniversary, taxable. Your wedding anniversary is also taxable. Then, Adam Individuals, individual private trust, individual private trust. Then, N for non-profit organization, then C for COVID, yes, any kind of gift given, uh, any kind of gift, any kind of compensation given on account of COVID, 
compensation given on account of covid here is where they are coming and clarifying that was it can be on two types it can be on two types on death also on alive also on death also on alive also if you are giving on alive they have given some condition what is the condition read it out with me it says any kind of medical expenditures actually incurred by him to treat covid 19 disease which means on alive whatever you give is fully exempt fully exempt then on death what is happening they are coming and saying death la irukumbodhu employer kudutha exempt death la irukumbodhu employer kudutha exempt if you get it from someone else it is subject to a maximum of 10 lakhs it is subject to a maximum of 10 lakhs 10 lakhs ku mela pochuna about 10 lakhs is taxable about 10 lakhs is taxable see understand it is subject to a maximum of 10 lakhs which means 10 lakhs ku mela pochuna 10 lakhs ka mala than taxable not everything is taxable not everything is taxable at the same time they are coming and saying boss this and all should happen if the death is happening within 12 months death is happening within 12 months when you receive the money adukku munadi 12 months ku le you should have got the covid death you should have got the covid death then only it is applicable then only it is applicable after c is l local authority then o general cases not covered t transactions not regarded as transfer except for gift transfer except for gift transfer any other transaction not regarded as transfer under the head capital gains under the head capital gains these are all exceptions these are all your exceptions with me till here yes now in relatives the hf also has a relative if the relative is of a hf then hf also has a relative for hf relatives are any members how do you become a member of hf it is either by birth or by bringing into the family it is either by birth or bringing into the family which means you have born into the family or you have been bought in as a spouse adopted child etc etc cases yes that is how you will become a member of the family clear yes who are not a member of the hf not a member of the hf would be basically daughters or a husband yes no daughters or a husband daughters husband child all these people will not be covered because they are that side family they are that side family they are not part of my family they are not part of my family yes or no yes. yes now step number 2 was to determine whether it is taxable or not taxable step number 3 determine the limit determine the limit now the limit comes and says when it is a money when it is a money if you receive more than 50000 per per year it is 50000 per year from every people or single person every person totally you should have not received more than 50000 rupees if you have received more than 50000 rupees everything is taxable everything is taxable coming to specified mobile they came and said specified mobile are ba pass dj bullions archaeological collections paintings any work of art shares and scriptures sculptures drawings jewelry very good if these are the items then it is covered if these are not the items anything else given is exempt anything else given is exempt any fridge tv motor car mobile phone anything given is exempt anything given is exempt if you are in specified mobile again they are coming and saying tell me whether it is an inadequate consideration or no consideration adequate consideration section ab apo we will look at inadequate consideration or no consideration at any point of time if the gift element goes beyond 50000 rupees whole of the assets are taxable whole of the assets are taxable meaning the gift element is taxable but for all assets but for all assets what do you mean by gift element your actual consideration compared to your fair market value take your fair market value minus the consideration will be your gift element if that gift element goes beyond 50000 rupees the gift element will become taxable in this please understand you have to look at the gift element for all assets together all assets together it is not for each asset it is for all assets together yes or no yes coming to the immovable property same conditions negative uh, nil consideration and inadequate consideration if it is nil consideration they are simply coming and saying if the stamp duty value goes beyond 50000 rupees per asset per asset please understand for money it was all assets for specified mobile it is all assets but for immobile it is per asset it is per asset if stamp duty value per asset goes beyond 50000 rupees that asset or a stamp duty value will become taxable if it is inadequate consideration i am coming and telling check for two conditions check for two conditions condition number 1 i am coming and saying was the stamp duty value minus the consideration should go beyond 50000 what stamp duty value minus the consideration should go beyond 50000 which means gift element which means the gift element point number 2 i am coming and saying stamp duty value should be more than 110% of consideration if you satisfy both the conditions then it is taxable if you don't satisfy any one condition also not taxable not taxable so what are the two conditions stamp duty minus the consideration should go beyond 50000 stamp duty should be greater than 110% of consideration in that case whatever is the gift element will become taxable if not nothing is taxable if not nothing is 
taxable and please understand for immobile property it is per asset it is per asset for other items it is all assets included it is all assets included yes or no yes here also they are coming and saying that boss the moment you have taxed something under the head ifos the amount which is taxed will be added to the cost of the asset what is stamp duty how to compute stamp duty check for valuation officer all those are the same are capital gains and the last and the most important provision they are coming and saying boss what is going to be taxed under gift is only capital assets not uh, stock and trade because yeah. stock and trade is under pgbp the money and the gift apart the money and the gift part stock and trade will go into pgbp anything else will be under capital gains with me till here yes now we have a chart in the book i don't have to discuss the chart so much but let me just clarify it quickly the chart basically is coming and saying for immobile property ask yourself are you the transferer or you are the receiver or you are the receiver if you are the transferer you are now going to have an income you're not going to have an income so i will come and ask you are you transferring as a stock and trade or as a capital asset if you tell me no no rahul i'm transferring it as a stock and trade then i'll come and say whatever income you have will be taxable under the head pgbp in that case i will come and say go and check pgbp section pgbp comes and says stamp duty value greater than 110% amount will become taxable amount will become taxable i'm coming and saying no no rahul it's a capital asset from whose side transfer our side from a transfer side if it's capital asset i'll go and look at section of capital gains in capital gains if you understand if i give it for nil consideration it is a gift which means transaction will not be regarded as transfer if i say no no rahul i have given some consideration at least 1 rupees there then in that case i will go and check for 50 c where i'll come and say stamp duty is more than 110% of consideration take the stamp duty value directly take the stamp duty value directly with me till here yes now come to the other side you are the receiver now receiver can receive it in the form of capital asset or stock and trade if i tell that the receiver has received it as a stock and trade i will go into the head of pgbp directly taxed of fully directly taxed of fully i am saying no no rahul i am the receiver receiving it as a capital asset then i will come and say okay let's come and talk together about ifos in ifos i'll do step number 1 this is an immobile property covered step number 2 covered in the exception no if it's covered in the exception not taxable cost of the asset will become cost to previous owner hey then i am coming and saying no no rahul it is taxable it is taxable then i look for 110% or 50000 if i say rahul 110% 50000 covered which means taxable which means whatever gift i put to will become added to the cost of the asset the new cost of the asset will become the whole of the sdv if i say no no rahul it is not covered gift not coming into picture ifos is not taxable then i will come and say cost is cost to the previous owner cost to the previous owner yes or no so the chart is there in the book if you feel like you don't understand you can try it once again right once again yes or no yes this is the mark of the end of chapter of i f o s within second item in the same chapter called as dividends same chapter called as dividends nothing much to discuss in dividends they come and say what is dividends first you have five items in dividends first one is distribution of assets second one is giving bonus shares to uh, only to preference shareholders not to equity shareholders giving bonus shares to preference shareholders or giving debentures to any shareholders giving debentures to any shareholders point number 3 liquidation point number 4 reduction of share capital point number 5 and the most important point is giving of loan giving of loan where a closely held company ends up giving a loan to the individual having more than 10% having more than 10% of the voting power then the loan given to him will be deemed as a dividend to the extent of accumulated profits to the extent of accumulated profits i don't care what is percentage and all is whatever loan i give will be fully deemed a dividend to the extent of accumulated profits assuming i am not giving it to the individual i can then give it to a firm or any other company in which this person has more than 20% more than 20% somewhere it will be here yeah giving more than 20% in that case then also it is deemed a dividend and if that is also not happening i can give it to any third party for his benefit no per, no no percentage no nothing i am giving to a third party for his benefit then also it is taxable one exception given to you where they are coming and saying if the lending is the primary business what if lending is the primary business or the loan or advance i have given is against a business transaction against a business transaction then it is not taxable under deemed a dividend this kind of questions in exam two things will hit you hard one is that they will silently come and tell you private company gave a loan second they will come and restrict it to the accumulated profits you have to be very careful if the loan is given as 5 lakh rupees but the profit is 50000 rupees you will restrict it to 50000 rahul 50000 is the profit 10% is the share so it is only 5000 no 50000 fully 
50,000 fully please understand just because his percentage is 10 does not mean that the profit will be 10 percent doesn't matter loan will be taken as full 50,000 loan will be taken as full 50,000 yes or no yes or no be careful about this this is one question which may come in exam which may come in exam because this is from individual perspective it becomes a dividend in my hand which means it is taxable in my hand yes or no so if the question somewhere comes and says that the company has given me loan and I am holding more than 10 percent then it become income in my hands Yes, sir. This is what is the provision definition of dividend. Coming to the provision of dividend, they simply come and say whatever dividend you have will be fully taxable under the head IFOS. You can only claim one expense against it, a silent adjustment of 20% of dividend income as interest cost. As interest cost, only if you have interest expense. Only if you have interest expense, you can claim maximum of 20%. If there is no interest expense, no deduction, no one else can be claimed. No commission, no bonus, no brokerage, no nothing. Yes, only interest expense can be claimed as a reduction. That to maximum of 20% of the dividend income. Okay, this is the next MCQ question which is most likely to come in. Please be careful about it. Silent adjustment. They will give you a dividend amount of 1 lakh rupees. I mean, numbers all around. They will give you a dividend income of 1 lakh rupees and they will come and say interest cost is 30,000 rupees. You can only claim 20. You can only claim 20. 80 will become taxable. 80 will become taxable. Please be extremely careful about this. Yes or no? Yes. Then they are coming and saying that boss, if at all you are going to give dividend, if you are going to give dividend, company has to deduct something called as TDS. Company has to deduct TDS at the rate of 10%. At the rate of 10%. 10% of TDS will not apply in case you are giving dividends to a individual. To whom? Individual. Provided the payment is not happening in cash and the amount is less than 5000. And the amount is less than 5000. Next part you can ignore. Mutual funds and all is not coming for exam. The dividend is coming for exam. Which they are coming and saying that you have to deduct TDS at the rate of 10% only if the dividend goes beyond 5000 and the payment is not by cash. Rahul, the payment is by cash, dividend is 4000 rupees, TDS varoma, varom, varom. If the payment is by cash and TD amount is less than 4000, then also TDS is applicable. The payment should not be in cash and the amount should be less than 5000. What? Payment should not be in cash and the amount should be less than 5000 both the condition to be satisfied both the condition to be satisfied then only tds will not apply anyone violated tds will apply at the rate of 10 percent on payment basis on payment basis with me yes great perfect this marks the end of your five heads of income called as salaries hp pgbp cg ifos in ifos raul what is not covered under 115 bac they are coming and saying that boss that family pension item is there no that is not allowed under 115 bac only the family pension alone is not allowed under 115 BSC. And one more item is that MP MLA road income that is anyway not coming for exam. That is anyway not coming for exam. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind.